If you go online, there's a million and one articles out there. Today we're trying to come up with one way that's surefire going to work every single time. guys and welcome back to my kitchen. If you are new here, my name is Kaylee and today in my kitchen we're going to be doing a little bit of science. We've got lots of free time on our hands now that we're at home. So I thought today would be the perfect time to do an experiment. <laughs> we'll see how many egg jokes I can fit into the, today's video. Today we're going to try out a few different ways to hopefully perfect the ramen egg. It's an art, but I know there's definitely some science to it. So we're going to try boiling it, well, boiling several eggs at different time intervals to see what's going to create the best egg. The big difference between just a regular soft boiled egg and a ramen egg is the beautiful marinade that it goes in. So once we figured out what's the perfect cooking temperature, then I'll show you how to marinate that egg and then create the perfect ramen egg. Stay tuned because once we perfect the ramen egg, you'll be seeing a few videos about how to Dress up your ramen, right? Instant noodles are beautiful. Ramen is easy, it's simple, but you can really amplify those flavors. But the first thing we need to do is perfect our egg. We're gonna be using two cooking methods today, just traditional boiling of the egg, and we're going to do it at about 15 second intervals. So we'll start with six minutes boiling our egg, then 6.15, 6.30, you get it. The other method that we're going to try today is we're feeling very fancy. So we've got our sous vide machine out in here. The great thing about a sous vide machine is you set the temperature, it heats up the water, which in turn heats up whatever food you're trying to cook, and it will never go above that particular temperature. So you get a perfect cook every time. The first method of soft boiling our eggs is just the traditional way using a pot of boiling water. So I got a big pot of water behind me in here. I made sure I have enough water so that it'll cover my eggs. Today when we're doing that, once the water is at a boil, you do wanna have a timer, you can have your phone by your side. Once it's at a boil, we're gonna very carefully ladle in the eggs. Make sure you're careful with that because if you just drop the egg in, it might crack and then make a big mess and it won't cook properly. After six minutes, we're gonna take out the first egg. Wait 15 seconds, take out the next one. Another 15 seconds. So we're gonna have five different eggs up till seven minutes. We're just trying to see like what's the perfect cooking time. Is it six? Is it seven? Is it somewhere in between? Once we take the eggs out, we're going to make sure they're each in their own individual ice baths. Yes, that's very high maintenance, but I'm doing that today so you don't have to do it. I've even got my sticky notes and my pen to make sure that everything is labeled and I don't get them all mixed up because I really do want to see what's the perfect egg. And the perfect egg for me might look different than the perfect egg for you. So pay attention to the cooking times and figure out which one you like best. All right, it's go time. I'm gonna get my water boiling in the back and then we'll start carefully getting everything organized for the ice bath. It is going to be time sensitive, so I wanna make sure my mise en place today is just separate ice baths for each of these different eggs. There we go. Okay, and we're back. Such quick prep. The reason why you take a soft boiled or hard boiled egg and put it into an ice bath right away is to cool it down. We don't want the egg to cook anymore. That's why we're trying to be as precise as possible. And by cooling that egg down, it'll help to peel the egg afterwards. Have you ever tried to impatiently peel a hard or soft boiled egg while it's still hot? You know that you're gonna lose half of that egg. Our water is at a rolling boil. What I like to do is actually move the pot off of the burner. That way it's not bubbling up too much. Otherwise the eggs might bounce around and break. So I'm gonna very carefully ladle those in just to make sure none of them are moving and then put it back and start my timer right away. Five, four, three, two, one. Six minutes, I'm just gonna take an egg and very carefully put it in its bath so it can start to cool down.
The reason why we're also testing out the sous vide machine today as well is because you can be so precise with the exact temperature of whatever you're cooking, we're trying to figure out what's the best way to do it. Yesterday, we did a few other experiments and tried just taking a raw egg, putting it into the water bath and cooking it for about 40 minutes at 150. At 150 degrees, the yolk is perfect. It's beautiful, it's soft boiled, but it's still a little bit runny. However, the egg white was so liquidy. What we learned from yesterday's sous vide experiment or disaster is just that you need the white and the yolk. They cook at different temperatures, it's a gradient. So you need the white to actually be warmer and cook more than the yolk. Another thing we did yesterday, we boiled one of the eggs for five minutes and then put it into the sous vide machine for the 40 minutes at 150. So that one's been resting in the fridge. Later on when we do the grand reveal, we're gonna see how that one turned out. So it's gonna be a surprise to both of us. Today we're hoping that by turning up the heat in the sous vide machine to 194, it's oddly specific, but given the research that we've done, we found that that seems to be kind of the sweet spot. We're gonna place an egg in there for 10 minutes and fingers crossed, that'll work. Which one comes out on top and which one cracks? <laughs> so we moved the sous vide machine just because I was a little nervous of keeping it in the plastic. 194 is a pretty high temp. Although the plastic says it can handle up to 210, it wasn't worth the risk. The pot is just on top of the stove because I needed a flat surface and somewhere to plug it in. It's still being heated up by the sous vide machine. Once the egg is inside of our sous vide machine and we've got it in there for 10 minutes, we're gonna be carefully peeling all of our other eggs very carefully. I hope that I don't have any casualties and lose any pieces of egg. And then once it's all set, we're gonna cut them open and see what's the best. Can I offer you an egg in this trying time? So taking this one out, it's been exactly 10 minutes. I'm gonna pop that into its own ice bath and let it cool down. One thing I want to point out is I'm noticing it might be difficult to see on camera because all the eggs are slightly different in size and shape, but I've noticed that this one that we only cooked for six minutes, it's sort of a little bit wider and a bit more flat. Because it's softer, everything is kind of spaced out a little bit more. Whereas something that we cooked for a much longer time, like seven minutes up here, this one is a bit more compact. It's got a bit more height to it. And interestingly enough, this 10 minute sous vide egg is really long and skinny. I don't know if that has to do just with the egg shape itself, but it's like perfect. It's the most perfect egg. Okay, it's finally time to cut through all of our eggs. I'm sure that when they designed this beautiful Japanese knife, they had in mind that we'd be doing this egg experiment right now. I've got a little bit of damp paper towel here. That way, as I'm cutting through the eggs, I know that there's gonna be some runny yolk. I'm just gonna wipe it clean before I cut to the next one. Now, as we're going through and determining what is the best egg for ramen eggs, you gotta keep in mind it's totally personal preference. And if you're not making ramen eggs, you're just doing soft boiled, it all depends what you wanna use these for, right? Maybe it's for avocado toast, maybe you wanna make just like an egg sandwich, who knows, maybe it's for ramen. But let's take a look inside and see what they all look like. All right, we're gonna start with our six minute egg. It is quite soft when I'm touching it. I'm a little bit nervous. Oh, that looks awesome. This one in here looks perfect. It's got a, all the white is cooked. A little bit of the yolk is cooked inside here, about a millimeter or two, and the rest is nice and runny. That would be ideal for like an avocado toast, or you want that nice runny egg yolk, or even a soft boiled egg where you dip in your toast. Too runny for ramen though. And the last egg from just the stove top boiled, we've got our seven minute egg. So far for personal preference, I think 6.45 or seven minutes, those two look perfection. 
it's solid enough that it's gonna hold its shape as it heats up in the ramen broth. Six minutes is super runny. If you compare six to seven minutes, there's a huge difference. All right, now time to take a look at our 10 minute sous vide egg. It was the longest, well, except for our surprise egg, the longest cooked egg today, but it was at a lower temperature. So let's see what we get. Oh, I think that's too much. The last one that we're gonna cut open is the one that we worked on yesterday. So it was just in the fridge overnight. Um, this one we did slightly different. So the idea was to cook it for five minutes just by boiling it on the stove top and that would get the egg white totally cooked through and then pop it into the sous vide machine for 40 minutes, but at 150. So that would make sure that the yolk is perfect. So we're trying kind of two different methods, seeing if a hybrid is going to work best. As we're looking through the different eggs, you can see what's interesting about this sous vide one that was in there for 40 minutes at 150 is that the yolk is super consistent. You don't have a gradient in color, whereas the other ones, you almost have like that ring around it, kind of like if you get a smoke ring when you're doing barbecue or something like that. Here we've got a ring of that lighter colored yolk that's more cooked through, and then you've got that nice runny inside. Here the yolk is totally consistent. It's all the same color, all the same texture, really nice and thick. Kind of jammy. Yeah, jammy is an interesting adjective to use, but it kind of fits in this case. All right, it's time for a quick taste test. What I'm curious to try is this one, the one that was five minutes boiled and then 40 minutes sous vide, but I am going to amp it up with a little salt and pepper. I'm noticing as I'm holding it that it's falling apart and that the white is actually still kind of soft, like a little goopy. What's interesting about this one is the egg white is still a little bit runny, almost a little bit slimy. I think if this was fresh, it would taste a little bit better. If there was a sweet spot maybe of boiling it for five and a half minutes, so then you'd get an egg white that's slightly more cooked through if you don't like a runny egg white. Similar to this one, the six minute boiled egg, the egg white is cooked all the way through, but the yolk here is slightly more consistent. But what I'm most curious about is to compare the six to seven minute. That's where we're seeing the biggest difference in terms of the yolk. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. <laughs> Sorry, mouthful. The egg white is cooked all the way through. I'm not picky about a lot of things, but I am picky about egg whites. I don't really like the runny one. This yolk is perfection. I just feel like such a millennial right now. I'm gonna pull up my avocados. I'm gonna make some nice bread because that's what we're doing in quarantine these days. And I'm gonna make some avocado toast with these. Whoa. Next up is gonna be the seven minute egg. Let's try this one out. This one definitely has more of a cooked yolk, a little bit of a ring around the outside and the inside still looks nice and thick, but not quite as runny. That is good. Definitely more cooked. See that? Almost like down in here, about half of it is cooked. You've got that light yellow color. And the top, it's not, it's definitely not as runny. Of course, you gotta keep in mind, if you're putting this into ramen, the heat from the broth and the ramen is gonna heat up that yolk. So it will be a bit more runny. I just cut in half that 645 one. You've got about as much of the cooked yolk as the seven minute one, but it's much more runny. So if you're into that, I think this is my preferred ramen egg, 645, to be honest. The final thing to transform our soft boiled eggs into ramen eggs is to create the marinade that it goes into. So what we typically like to do is we just simply use soy sauce and mirin or rice wine. When we're mixing these together, of course it's gonna depend on how many eggs that you're actually preparing for your ramen, but typically we use a ratio of two parts mirin to one part soy sauce and then two parts water. So that could be two tablespoons, one tablespoon, two tablespoons water. That's ratios, kids. For those of you who are being homeschooled right now, two to one to two. Now the marinade that you put your soft boiled eggs into, it's totally to taste and it's all about preference. So if you like it a little bit saltier, add some more soy sauce. If you like it a little bit sweeter, you can add some more mirin, or if it's just a little bit too strong, put in some more water. Let's taste this one though. I like that. Yesterday, when we were prepping for our experiment, because that's what all good scientists do, is we made probably a double or triple batch of this, and we used three soft boiled eggs that we cooked for seven minutes. And now ideally, you wanna let these marinate overnight. So we're gonna take a look at those and cut one of those open so you can see what it looks like once it's been marinated.
that's good. It's nice and sweet, a little bit salty. This is awesome. Well, that's it. This about wraps it up. Please excuse all of my terrible egg puns, although we did have an excellent time with our wonderful soft boiled egg experiment. Thank you so much for joining me today in my kitchen. Tune in later on in the week when I'm gonna show you how we use these ramen eggs to really dress up your ramen. Let's kick those instant noodles to the curb and see how can we spice it up, make sure that we're creating something delicious, nutritious in our new quarantined lifestyle. Let us know down below, what was your favorite egg? If you are inspired by this video and make some delicious avocado toast, some ramen, anything else that involves soft boiled egg, do tag me on any and all social media. My handles are here. I look forward to hearing from you guys even more now, right? Because you've got the time. Be creative in your kitchen, stay safe, stay home, and until next time, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>